it's got a little bit of exploitation, but not so much exploitation. Um, I think that it's more along the lines of the depths of uh, sickness that an individual has. And uh, in a way, I actually think that's kind of artistic because there's uh, there's some people out there that can reach this depth of depravity. <laughs> I think it's not your typical exploitation film, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't categorize it as that. I would categorize it as, as a horror or thriller, but I think that fans of the exploitation drama will appreciate the elements that are still, still give a nod to exploitation. I like to push my boundaries as an actress. And this film definitely helped me do that. I definitely went out of my comfort zone because um, topless is no problem for me, but raping scene and whatever, even whatever was implied is still too much. And um, rape stuff is taboo to me because I was raped in real life. So doing something like this puts me out of my comfort zone and maybe actually down the road I know it makes me feel more comfortable with myself and with my acting abilities as well. I think that I can safely go there because I've never been there in my life for real and I think that um, knowing that, thank God, I probably never will, I think that I can safely go there and express um, that fear. And also the fear of that actually really happening to people. I'm just imagining um, them at that, in that situation. Yeah, honestly, in real life, if you're a woman and you get in a situation where you're honestly trapped, unless you have like mad ninja skills, you're not getting out of that, like in real life. But frankly, like something that's, that's gonna happen too much in real life. Like in my field of work, I've dealt with many creeps. None of them are ones that would tie me up and rape me. They would like, be creepy and linger, and I tell them off, and they get scared away. Like, the situations that happen are realistic. Yes, they could happen. They do show the realistic realistic side of things. If they do happen, there's a comedy level that you can still not be totally disturbed. You can kind of laugh at it and not feel like a bad person for laughing at it. And also keep in mind that it's just as realistic as other things you see in horror movies and thrillers. Like, really, a lot of situations are like a one in a gazillion chance going to happen to you. So... If people get like legitimately scared, they really shouldn't because it's just unrealistic as, you know, wrapping their car around a tree and being severed in half and blah, what and whatnot. Do I think this movie gives a negative message or is socially irresponsible? I, I personally don't think so. But because I think it does show some real human behavior and people, the, the characters reacting how people really would react in a circumstance like this and things like this really do happen. So I, I don't think this movie is irresponsible or sends out the wrong message at all. You know, everyone, when they have a, a movie that's, you know, the family gets kidnapped and dragged through the desert and beaten up, and but, you know, they're saved at the end, or the girl walks out of the house and um, lives through her attacker, it's, everyone says the same thing. You know, they're like, well, that would never happen. And they're like, well, it's a movie. So, I mean, you, you're looking at real life events. How many people that... Um, you know, how many people, number one, that go through a traumatic experience live through something that bad? If you're kidnapped um, at gunpoint, the possibilities of you walking out after a couple of hours, I believe, is half, is like 50%. The, the thought of you walking away from that kidnapper after eight hours is almost nothing so um especially because you haven't fought right there so the fact that any of these girls getting out of a situation like this um with that kind of an individual in reality it just wouldn't happen so i think it's being realistic and i think it's it's being responsible to the viewer 
to end that way because it's not giving you a Candyland fairy tale. It's giving you reality. I really hope that when men watch this, they will get disgusted too. And if they ever want to rape someone or stalk someone, make a woman feel uncomfortable at work or anywhere else, maybe they, I hope that they will think twice before doing something like this. I think there might, there probably will be some people who don't like the fact that no one escaped, that none of the girls escaped at all. So the movie, in a way, there's not that payoff at the end. It's just like a really dark, gloomy ending. I, I would say, I think, I think that's great. I think it's great when a movie's unpredictable because I think for anyone starting out watching it, they would think that someone would escape, especially my character or that Steve would, would get caught and get arrested or get shot dead by the police, or that one of the other employees would grab his gun. I think those are all the predictable things that would happen, and this is, is just not predictable. And I think American cinema, anyway, almost always, even if it's a dark movie, always has some kind of um, happy ending in a way, even if it's just the the villain getting getting some comeuppance. But I think I really like this because other countries like Japanese cinema, for instance, doesn't always have a happy ending at all. And I think I think it's great how this one doesn't either. I believe that there is a moral of this. I mean and number one, you don't know who is living next door to you. You don't know who is your banker. You don't know who is your baker, uh, who is your dentist, who is your doctor. Uh, you don't know who half of the people in this world don't know their neighbors. They don't know what they're doing behind doors. Um, the thing that when serial killers get caught, the first thing everybody says is, I would have never thought of him like that. So, yeah, it does have a moral. It's, it's definitely make sure that you be careful of how you, number one, view other people and strangers. Um, you never know who they are or what they're thinking. Like I said, I love the horror genre, and I think this is a really different kind of horror movie, and it's also nice to work with the same filmmaker again. I think there's a level of trust when you work with someone a second time or, you know, or a third time, fourth time, that you just don't have that first time. The first time you work with someone, you're, you don't fully trust them, you don't know exactly what their style is, but when you work with someone, someone more than once, you, it, it's easier for them to explain things to you. And I, I think this movie will, will come out really good. I think it will, I think it will satisfy horror fans. Well, Bilo is generous, so money is a good factor too to accept it all like this. Um, he uh, takes care of his actors. I've worked with Bill before, so, and I enjoy working with him, and I know that he gets his movies finished and made and out there. And I also liked the concept. I'm, I really like horror movies, and I really like movies that that um, are disturbing. So, yeah, I thought it would be fun to be a part of a movie like this. Well, Bill is funny guy. <laughs> and he kept interrupting my character, miserable uh, Taylor. I was trying to be miserable and I was miserable and he keeps his jokes. And, and uh, it's funny and it's, uh, it was great, but I wanted to punch him in the face. <laughs> 